Hi, I'm Roger Margolis, VP of Radar at O'Reilly, and I'm here at the Software Architecture Conference in New York City for 2019. And I'm here with Rich Graham, who's the Director of Sales at White Source Software. Welcome, Rich. Hey, Roger. How are you? Good. So, White Source, they uh, do open source security and management software. You know, what does that mean? What kind of areas do you focus on? Yeah, sure. So, yeah, we, we, we like to say we help our customers harness the power of using open source. And by that I mean uh, identifying all of the elements of open source that they use in their development process, and then also identifying the risk associated with using open source. Uh, the challenge is, you know, of course, you need to move faster and, and, and get to market with better services and, and, and applications and offerings. Uh, so increasingly, organizations are moving to using open source in that development. Um, so this is, this of course, presents a tremendous opportunity for them to move faster, but it also presents some risk, right? So the challenge is really getting, you know, understanding what you're using and then identifying the risk and how to remediate that risk. Mm -hmm. So what's going on in the market? I mean, are, are you getting any resistance on the open source front or is that like a real positive? Yeah, so uh, the market that we, we, we play in is called software composition analysis. Really it's kind of an intersection between InfoSec, traditional InfoSec, and, and DevOps or DevSecOps, which I think has rather been aptly termed, one yeah. of the terms I like. Yeah, it is a good term. Yeah, uh, and, and I think we're in a um, sort of an inflection point where we've, we've, uh, we've been working with what you'd call the early adopters in the market, and we're transitioning now into the mainstream or early mainstream. Um, and so, you know, I think it's analogous to, to the cloud, um, where a lot of organizations today are taking a, a cloud-first approach to their architecture. Um, we're seeing in development, most organizations are taking an open source-first approach. Uh, and then, so, you know, you look at a, a typical application today, a, a tr you know, a typical commercial application, the overwhelming majority of that code consists of open source as opposed to proprietary in-house code. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, if you kind of you know, rewound it 10 years ago, it was the polar opposite. So uh, people are using open source and, and, and need a way to, to kind of have a governance model uh, to support all the integrations, all the languages and, you know, that, are, that are, they're using today, but of course, you know, what's coming in the future as well. That's great. We noticed the same thing on our platform. So that there's definitely a, a thing towards the cloud and towards open source. So growth and shift in the market, what, what do you think is coming next? Yeah, I mean, th that's, that's a great question and, and it's something we're always trying to you know, keep our ear to the street uh, about kind of you know, what our customers are asking. And, and I mentioned, you know, we've been very fortunate at White Source to work with a lot of the early adopters in the market and they're driving a lot of the innovation that, that, that's, that's you know, taking place. Um, we like to think of it as white source everywhere. So you can invoke white source, you know, right through the browser. Tools for developers um, that enable them to vet open source before bringing, it, you know, before even bringing uh, components in house. You know, it's, it's the best way to shift left is not even to bring in those questionable components. Um, you know, the, the concept of effective usage or, or am I affected by security vulnerabilities? So at white source, we have what's called prioritize. Um, so not only do we bring the, the uh, alerts and the inventory of the open source that you're using, but we'll actually show you in your application code where you're calling out to a vulnerable open source component so that you can prioritize your remediation. Uh, in addition to this, we'll show you where you're not calling that component, right, which is mm -hmm. even better. So if you have a green shield within the UI, you know I'm not affected by that security vulnerability. We found that about 70%, 7-0 of the uh, security vulnerabilities that show up in an inventory, you're not actually calling, right? So you've pulled in the library, um, but you're not met necessarily calling that vulnerability. So kind of bringing that level of granularity to, to the remediation process is really a game changer. Um, and really just, you know, like I mentioned DevOps and kind of integrating with the DevOps tool chain, everything needs to be consumable through APIs. Uh, so anything you can do in white source, you can do programmatically through our APIs. Um, I mean, I can go on, of course, because the market is really exploding. Mm -hmm. uh, I said one of the last pieces I'll mention is, you know, serverless. So we just, we just, um, oh. you know, uh, launched support for supporting serverless architectures, and, and it's pretty funny. Uh, you know, a few years ago, I remember uh, sitting with my customers on a whiteboard and, and kind of conceptualizing containers and conceptualizing serverless architecture when it came out. And you know, fast forward a couple of years later, I actually have customers who are deployed with complete serverless architectures. Uh, containerized architectures, and they're actually monitoring and managing, you know, that in real time. That's really great to hear. It's something that we're tracking as well. I think serverless—it feels a little immature still. I don't know if you think so as well. 
but uh, it's definitely something a lot of people are talking about these days. Yeah, I, I was at a conference just uh, two weeks ago, and it was with a startup, a uh, startup type company, but his entire infrastructure is, 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 is based on uh, serverless. Interesting. Right? Even, even in production, when I, when I kind of gasp and look at that, he says, I get that reaction a lot, right? So I mean, it, it, it's, it's sort of the, the, the legacy companies that need, you know, need to keep this uh, sort of at the forefront of their minds, and they, they're, they're competing with the startups of the world that can, that can start off with that architecture in mm -hmm. the first place. Is there anything else you want to share about how customers are implementing light source? Sure, yeah, um, that's a great question. So uh, most of our customers will implement uh, the technology as a part of their CI, CD pipeline. Um, and it's one of the value props for using white sources. We want you to use the tool, right? Some of the code scanning technologies have gotten a, a bit of a, you know, a bad name, if you will, um, for becoming a bottleneck for development. So at White Source, you know, we encourage our customers to integrate with the CI pipeline, and, and you know, we have customers literally that have 400, 500 thousands jobs configured leveraging White Source, and every time they run a build, they run White Source in parallel. Um, I also talk about you know implementation. I have a, a large customer, uh, a bank financial customer that um, that doesn't even log into the UI. Right? I mentioned anything you can do in White Source, you could do programmatically through our REST APIs. So they'll use White Source's APIs and pull that data as part of their broader risk management platform. I think that's an interesting use case. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's you know I, I'm forever surprised. It's a very flexible technology, and I learn more from the customers of how they're using our technology. Uh, and then, and they kind of tell us how they're using it, and we kind of, you know, we'll kind of build use cases for future around that. There are certainly some standard use cases for, for you know, how, how customers, like I said, they, they, the idea is to continually and automatically monitor your open source and your risk. So CI, CD is usually a good place to start, um, but our customers are always keeping us on our toes. Mm -hmm. What is the kind of share between your, your GUI and the uh, API usage, would you say? So, uh, you know, I think most customers will have a, uh, it's a, it's a great question actually, I never really thought about it. Um, most of our customers will use the API for some integration points when they want to pull some data. Um, however, they'll also use the UI. Uh, the, the, the use case I mentioned I think is rare. Most folks will have access to the UI. Mm -hmm. There's also workflows you can create inside of, work, uh, inside of white source. So these are, you know, policies we call them, or custom workflows where you can bring in human intervention you can create, um, you know, assignments for perhaps even a legal person to get, you know, to look at something uh, that popped up in the code and then kind of sign off on it or even go as far as breaking a bill based on that information. Um, so those users, of course, would need access to the to the portal UI. Mm -hmm. So, given where you're at, how do you plan on like positioning white source and you know, take advantage of what's going on in the market and for the growth that we're seeing? Yeah, so you know, I, I mentioned we're we're kind of phasing into the into more of the mainstream market. I've seen various numbers out there, 200 million plus is for is sort of the current market value, uh, and that's projected to go up eight to ten x in the next few years, right? So there's a lot of growth in this market. People are are, are they're starting to understand that uh, what the challenge is. Uh, Equifax brought some attention to us with the with that you know breach that happened through an, right. an open source framework. Um, so now, you know, organizations are realizing that uh, we need to have robust governance models in place. We need to provide the tools for our developers to use open source effectively and capitalize on that, uh, you know, on that opportunity. Um, so really, uh, it, the, the, the future looks very, very bright. Uh, we just took a, another round of investment of 35 million. So I think right now we're around 150-ish employees total. By this time next year, perhaps when we sit down again, the goal is to be around 300. Great. Well, this is really pretty interesting. Great fit for our conference. Thanks again for your time. Yeah, thanks, Roger. It was, uh, thanks for having me.